Good afternoon, everybody. It is my pleasure to moderate this session, a conversation with Dr. Maria Hochschmidt. Dr. Hochschmidt is the Director of International Housing Finance at the Wharton School of Finance at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Hochschmidt's work focuses on housing markets and urban and housing policy and the deepening of housing finance systems, particularly in developing and emerging market economies. In addition, Dr. Hochschmidt is the founder and executive director of HOFINET, the Housing Finance Information Network, a global web portal that consolidates international housing finance information and statistical data for public use. And she's ideally suited to speak to us today on the topic of this session, investment in housing and its impact on economic revitalization. Welcome, Dr. Hochschmidt. Thank you, Steve. Well, let's get going. Um, I want to invite you to share with us uh, about the research you've been doing. If you could tell us about the contribution of the housing sector, both formal and informal, and how it can be more accurately dimensioned to the economic activity and dynamism of countries. Thank you. I gladly speak to that. Uh, I worked with Habitat for Humanity um, to begin to um, frame the housing sector uh, as part of the economy in a better way, so that it is better understood that the housing sector, uh, particularly also in emerging and developing countries, um, is an enormous part of the economy. And so uh, we work together with uh, Habitat uh, to um, find the numbers uh, to show uh, how big that sector is. Um, we worked in 11 uh, emerging markets and developing countries uh, to figure out the data. And we found that indeed uh, on the investment side, so the construction of new stock uh, and the improvement of the existing housing, uh, that the contribution to GDP as measured by the different countries uh, is in the order uh, of two, three to seven percent depending on how much um, investment in new stock is going on. Uh, but that uh, is not the biggest contribution of housing uh, to the GDP of a country. What really is the biggest part uh, of the contribution is the consumption, the services that is provided mm -hmm. by the existing stock, which is, of course, much larger than the new additions to the stock. And that consumption... Uh, that is measured by rental payments, by um, the payments that owners should have to make uh, in case they would rent their own dwelling, that contribution uh, is roughly 7 to 19% of GDP uh, in the different countries. So the total um, contribution of housing um, to uh, the economy um, is in the order of 20% in um, many countries. So, um, but the way we measured it in emerging markets where the data were not very complete, um, we found that it was a total of 14% across the 11 countries uh, that we had included. But as you say, um, Stephen, the problem in emerging markets is that uh, so much of the housing construction and consumption is taking place in the informal sector. And that uh, is typically not measured. So uh, if I can uh, have the one slide to show the figures. Here uh, in this slide, the orange bar shows the consumption part, the services part, that the stock is contributing to GDP uh, in the different countries. And the gray part of the bars are the investment uh, in new construction. So you can see how large uh, that um, the consumption part um, of the housing um, of housing's contribution to the GDP is. Uh, moreover, that consumption part, of course, if you invest now in new housing, that consumption stays for, generates uh, income um, for 20, 30 years. So that's very important, often not measured in, in emerging markets. If we can show the next slide, 
The other omission in the data is really that the informal sector in general is not measured at all. So we did a good face um, effort uh, to measure that uh, informal sector uh, contribution uh, to the to housing uh, um, in the GDP. And if we assumed that only 50% um, of informal housing was measured in the GDP, um, we showed the, the figures there uh, in the orange bar. If it is not measured at all, we um, then uh, get a much larger figure, uh, of course, for that omission. Um, and we figured out, so that slide can go, um, we figured out that the total contribution uh, that was left out um, of the, the housing sector measurement is in the order of one and a half to 3% of GDP um, by simply omitting uh, the informal uh, construction and consumption. So it is an enormous part of GDP, very big, and it is often not well understood. The other component beyond GDP is that housing contributes to uh, employment. It contributes mm -hmm. to um, uh, the social well-being of households, um, the improvement of neighborhoods, um, and indeed, in many cases, uh, the productive sector, because the home is often where uh, people produce what they sell. Uh, so it is a big part uh, of the economy, simply beyond what goes into the figures of GDP. Um, so that is uh, what we try to research and where we discovered that the data is terribly inadequate. Um, and that is a pity because it doesn't uh, give housing the place it deserves, uh, for instance, in stimulus packages. Was, was, this a, was the data surprising to you, Maria, in terms of the scale and the size and the percentage uh, that uh, housing in general and the informal market uh, constitutes in, in particular? Were you surprised by the size and the scale of it? What surprised me was not that, because I know the figures from advanced economies. Mm -hmm. And here, of course, we have a very active developer and home builder sector that will do everything in their power to show the importance of the housing sector to GDP. So we have very, very good data in several advanced economies. What surprised me was how much was left out um, in the measurement of GDP um, related to the housing sector uh, in emerging markets. And that therefore, many governments see housing basically as a cost post. Uh, it is a an, an burden uh, to the budget. Uh, and many ministries of finance uh, and even ministries of housing uh, do not present housing as a very important part uh, of the economy. That was surprising. How much was left out, indeed. So would there be, um, so, and, and typically governments think yep, in, with respect to housing around new construction, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty obvious uh, part of what they think about. But are there, are there um, uh, strategies or measures uh, where the diversification of the investment in the housing sector can be improved? Uh, in order to increase the the catalytic effect that it can have on economic recovery and employment, and also the development of community community re resilience, are there any strategies that you can think of for um, and and or maybe even some examples of of places where the work is is going well? Yes, housing is used, but not in many countries. But it is used uh, as a stimulus. Um, for the economy. Certainly now with the dual um, crisis of a COVID crisis, a health crisis that is um, very closely related to the living environment of people, access to sanitation and all the rest of it. Um, and then um, the economic crisis that this COVID crisis has caused. 
So, but it is surprising that only in a very small percentage of countries, um, this uh, the housing sector is utilized uh, to stimulate um, the economy to be part of an overall stimulus package. The difficulty for countries to include housing is that it is easy um, to focus a stimulus package on that part of the housing market that already works very well. And that is the top part of the market where developers get developer loans, where people get mortgages. Um, and so there is a lot of focus on uh, mortgage interest rates, for instance, to the top of the market. But the difficulty of creating a much more meaningful stimulus package is that what you want to do with the stimulus package is really opening up part of the housing market that were not integrated in the mainstream before, because that will really have a catalytic uh, effect uh, on economic growth uh, and on the housing sector itself. So the difficulty is to find these triggers that can actually um, work for the frontier of the market, uh, the lower income part that is not now part of the formal economy. So you want to be inclusive in your stimulus package and focus on the lower income, on the informal sector, not only on ownership, but also on the much needed rental sector. And that is much more complicated than just slap on an interest rate subsidy for the top end of the market. So, um, and that is why the stimulus packages that do exist are often not very effective um, for expanding the housing market in developing countries. Well, that's, that's fascinating. And we we just have a, a, a couple minutes left. I do want to just ask going forward now, after this really uh, enlightening and almost breakthrough kinds of research that you've uh, that you've cited here. What's next? What are, what are you going to be looking towards uh, for taking this uh, this data and uh, and moving forward going uh, from from here? So what we are doing with a lot of um, and not just Habitat alone, uh, but we have formed a coalition of like minded organizations that take this message, um, if you wish, on the road. So we go to uh, several different countries to show the data and to show the importance uh, of the sector and also to talk about potential policies that countries uh, might actually uh, consider if they want to include housing in their stimulus packages, but also for the future. So not just for the narrow stimulus of this moment, but um, in general to uh, improve uh, the contribution that the housing sector can make. So we discuss with countries, uh, particularly their land policies, many countries um, many local governments have uh, already access to land that they own. How can they best utilize that land resource um, to uh, get uh, affordable housing uh, going? Um, they also have to look at access to finance. How can this large informally employed part of the economy um, the many, up to 60% of the labor force often is in the informal sector. They can pay, but they are not allowed uh, to, or not able uh, to get into the banking system for a mortgage. How can that be facilitated? Uh, and lastly, um, if you need subsidies, how to best create them? So those are the policies we then discuss with governments. I think I'm out of time. Well, that's how you've you've nailed it beautifully, <laughs> Maria. Thank you for sharing such excellent information, both data and also uh, uh, opportunities and uh, strategies for the future. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your insights with us here today, um, Dr. Maria Hoeksmith. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I'm Stephen Seidel. Thank you, thank you Steve.